بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم The next master or the next form of the master we are going to discuss is the pattern fa'alan So fa'alan بفتح الفاع والعين with the fa kalima and the ain kalima both have a fatha So he says that this pattern it encompasses a meaning of change uh, and settlement commotion movement qalb istirab and haraka So whenever you have a master on this pattern fa'alan it shows movement it shows like a uh, uh, commotion some kind of unsettlement So for example he's gave a few here nazawan uh, naqazan qafazan all of these here mean to like here jump leap skip so all of these it shows movement it shows a lot of like person is jumping skipping so it shows movement and then from there he says another two examples is boiling so when you boil something if it starts to bubble and there's lots of commotion and a lot of movement within the pot you say ghalayan and if it's just simmering it's ghalyun okay Another example you have ghathayan so in ghathayan is to feel sick so basically there's a lot of movement in your stomach or in your head you just feel it. it's istirab there's a commotion there's a m- movement unsettlement within your within your your digestive system as a result you're feeling unwell you feel like vomiting you feel like throwing up so ghathayan is to feel sick okay so those are some examples there another ex- set of examples in terms of fire so some adjective that describes heat and fire you have lahaban is blaze sadakhan again is to become hot wahajan blaze all of these so fa'alan and then he, he, he analyzes it he says here he gives two Quran examples he, uses, he says that the word ghalyun is boiling but not ghalayan because ghalyun is boil and ghalayan is a boiling where there is a lot of uh, movement and haraka okay and again, another example, he says in the Quran, Allah says here, وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ So, hayawan, so hayat is life. But hayawan, what do you mean by hayawan? So, he says that this, this master of hayawan, on the pattern of fa'alan, it not only shows life, but it shows that, do you know, like for example, what we say in our, our language, we say for example now in the lockdown, everything's dead, meaning there's no movement. And everything's alive, meaning there's a hustle and bustle. Okay, so when something's got a lot of hustle and bustle, it's, it's alive with movement, alive with people, alive with emotion and happiness and joy. And everything's like, imagine you've got a picture in a, like, in a desert, wild west, everybody's like, it's very hot, nobody's moving, dead. So it's not much going on. A lot going on, there's lots of trees, lots of movement, lots of happiness, joy, playing, enjoyment, a lot of movement, life. So you see, say that, that Allah has said that the hereafter is hayawan. So, it, so it's a real life, but having this master, it hints towards a real hustle bustle, a real fun, a real enjoyment, lots of movement, lots of things taking place. So lots of things to do. Fi shughlin. In Ashab al-Jannati, yawma fi shughlin. There's lots of things going on, lots of activity. Fi tafasir. But in general, it means it is, and the tafsir I've mentioned is, tafsir bin misa, one example. But it means lots of actions, lots of movement, lots of occurrences. So that's why this word hayawan, has that element to it. Understood? Yes? Another master he mentions here is Taf'al. Now, regarding Taf'al, uh, he says here Taf'al is for Takthir and Mubalagha. When you have a Taf'al, this shows Takthir and Mubalagha. But one thing we have to remember, again, all of these Masadir are for Thulathi Mujarrad. Because Tulathi Mujarrad Masadir are Sama'i. They don't have a Qiyah. So you can't say, for example, uh, the Master Tafa'ul shows this. Because every single verb from that Bab has that Master. You can't change a Master. These Masadir which have special meanings are regarding or relating to those Masadir which are from verbs which are from Tulathi Mujarrad. Okay? Because they don't have fixed Masadir. So when you have a particular Master, it can imply a particular meaning. Bab if'al's mustadir can't imply any particular meaning because they're fixed, they're mustarid, they have a fixed pattern. So he's saying here, one thing we need to keep in mind, that taf'al can also be a mustard for uh, uh, bab taf'il. This is what you need to remember that. Bab taf'il, he's mentioning it in the next bit, I think, here. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so for example, like Zakkar you Zakkiru, you have Tazkar. That's from Zakkar you Zakkiru. You can have Karar you Karriru, Takrar. So Takriran wa Takraran. So Taf'al is also a master of Thulathi, of Mazid Fi, Bab Taf'il. That master doesn't have this meaning. It may, but that's coincidental, accidental. That's not a property of the master of that verb. This taf'al is of a thulathi mujarrad verb, which has this master. Then it will have the meaning of takfir and mubalagha. Do you understand? So, if you sum so what we're seeing here is if you have taf'al. Yes? Okay. If this is from thulathi mujarrad, or from thulathi mazid fi, i.e. namely fa'ala. Correct? So this masdar will show you as what? Takthir and Mubalagha. This does, this does not necessarily show that. Because that is a, a muttarid mas masdar. So for example, karrara and takrar. So karrara equal to takrar. So the, the, the takthir and Mubalagha in there is coincidental. It's not like a fixed property of that masdar. As opposed to the words that are mujarrad that have a taf'al master. So, for example, Jala yajulu jawlanan. Okay? And tajwal. So, Jala yajulu to roam about. That's what we call it jawal, mobile phone, it roams about. So, tajwal, when you roam or wander a lot, that's called tajwal. Okay? Then you have tal'ab, tahdar, I cannot find it in dictionaries. Tal'ab is to play a lot. So, these masadir uh, show the meaning of the action taking place abundantly and frequently. Okay? Yes? So for example, you got here ta'dad. So adda ya'uddu, addan is to count something. And then master is ta'dad, to count a lot. Okay? Yes? So that's a, that's a pattern of uh, taf'al, gives the meaning of uh, mubalaga and takfir, something occurring abundance or plentiful. Okay? Now, the next one is quite rare. I never, I didn't know this anyway before that. He says, Fi'ilun. Fi'i. Yeah, Fi'ila. Fi'ila. So it shows Kathra. So for example, he says, Fi'ila. For example, Kana Bainum Rimiya. So Ramayim, Rami, Ramya is to throw. And if you say there was a Rimiya between them, it means what? There was a, a war or a Throwing between, I mean, they throw at each other for a long, a long time. Dillila is to show something a lot. So, Dalayadullu Dillila to show a lot. Kittita uh, Hijira to speak a lot. There's a masadir of Khilifa to be very obsessed in the, in the matters of Khilafa. So, these are some masadir, but that is, I probably see it very rarely, but keep a note of it in your mind. So, from here now, he's finished off some standard patterns. Or what he thought was standard. And the summary of those was what we had. Fa'alun fu'ulun. So fa'alun is the uh, all of this, all of these are thulathi mujarrad. So fa'alun is muta'addi usually, fu'ul is usually lazim. Fi'ala shows a uh, job, occupation, office. Then we had fu'al, it shows either a. So for example, fa'alun and fu'ulun. We have sad the example we had was Yasudduna uh, Anka Sududa, Lazim, Saddun An Sabilillah. Muta'addi. And then Hirfa is Fi'ala. And two Quranic words were Siqaya and Imara. Siqaya al Hajj and Imara al Mashal al Haram. And Fu'al it shows a noise or a sound or illness. And we didn't mention it then, but Muka' means to whistle. So Fu'alun is the, shows a sound. So Ma kana salatun in the bayti illa muka' wa tasdiya. When they performed the Mushrikun, when they did the tawaf around the Baytullah. It was just basically a whistling and cupping. It was no essence of the ibadah. So muka, fu'alun, a sound. So fu'alun shows a sound. Uh, it also shows what? Uh, illnesses. And then we also branch off from there and said that fu'al can also show, show uh, something that's broken. And from there the Quranic word judadan, hutaman. Okay. Then we had fa'il. And we said fa'il shows sound. And you have fa'il, for example, in the Quran verse is what? Lahum fiha zafirun wa shahiq. So they have sounds of zafir and shahiq. So the zafir and shahiq, fa'il pattern, to show sounds of the people of Jahannam. And then fi'al, 
We said it shows imtina when somebody doesn't do something. Like aba ya aba iba and to refuse to do something. And one example is khila. So khada'at al qaswa. The qaswa has refused to move forward. Then we had fa'alan, um, which shows what haraka and movement, like hayawan. In the dar al akhir, al hayal hayawan. They had taf'al, for mubalagah, there's no Quranic examples of that. And fi'ila, there's also no Quranic examples of that. And then at the end, he mentions a few more masadir, but he doesn't, he doesn't put it in the headings. He says, for example, fu'la is very common for colors. The pattern fu'la is common for colors. For example, humra, humra means what? Red. Sufra, yellowness. Kudra, like a murky color. Okay? Fa'al is also pattern. For example, bayad, sawad, those are what colors, uh, patterns for uh, colors. Yes? Then he mentions fi'al. He says fi'al is a pattern usually for measurements. So for example, something is small, you say what? Sigar. Something is big, you say kibar. Okay? Yes? And he mentions here, one tafriq, he says, look, if it's to do with measurement, you will say kibar. For example, Allah says in the Quran, وَأَصَابْهُ الْكِبَرُ وَلَهُ ذُرِّيَةٌ ضُعَفَا So kibar, old age. And kibrun, if it's sukun on the back, that is pride and arrogance. So fi'al shows measurements. Okay? Like kibar, old age. And sigar, young age or small body. And kibrun is arrogance. So similarly, sigar, small in body. And sughr and sagar, is small metaphorically, meaning disgrace. Yes? Similar to that is what ghilad and ghilda. So ghilad is fi'al. It shows a roughness in, in body. The body being harsh and coarse, not smooth. And ghilda is metaphorical harshness, i.e. characteristic harshness. That's why the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa says, وَلْ يَجِدُوا فِيكُمْ ghilda." This is sense harshness. And then from there you have qisar, to be short. Irad, Wide to be wide, thiqal to be heavy, dhakhim and dhikham to be big, to be large, idham to be great. So this fi'al shows measurements or quantity. Okay, so he's mentioned those rules regarding uh, the masadir. So it's the end of the uh, discussion of masadir. Well, there's Master Mimi coming up shortly. So a quick recap is what we have so far we have masadir, thulathi mazid fi, the muttarid. They all have one master. That's done. The Mujarrat, they have different masadir. Why do they have different masadir? What's the two primary reasons of having different masadir? Should you go back to the screen? Beginning. The two primary reasons for having different masadir is what? اختلاف اللغات and اختلاف المعنى. اختلاف اللغات is sama'i. There's nothing you can do about that. The Arabs, different, different qaba'il, use different uh, words. You just have to learn them and go by those. Then you have another reason is اختلاف المعنى. That one word may have different masadir because each masdar has a different meaning. And then we had a few examples like we had sigar and sagara, dar and dur. And we went through a few examples kufr, kufran, hidayah, huda. And after that, we went through some partic particular patterns which have particular meanings. And we discussed those. Okay? And then at the end, he gives two different patterns with different meanings. Okay? Right. And we'll go through here Al-Mastar uh, Al-Mimi Okay So Al-Mastar Al-Mimi What's Al-Mastar Al-Mimi? Al-Mastar Al-Mimi Is a Mastar We start with a Mim basically So Al-Mastar Al-Mimi A Mim A Mimi A Mimi Mastar Meaning a Mastar That has a Mim At the beginning What's the pattern of this? He says that the pattern of Master Al Mimi is usually what? He says here it is Maf'al. So Master Al Mimi is what? Maf'al. Anybody wants to look at this in more detail in Al Maqsood, uh, the book on Sarf that has more detail on this. But this is very brief. So Maf, regarding the Awzan, it's a lot of detail in there. So Maf'al, like for example, this shows you Master Mimi. For example, Khaira Maqdamin. قَدِيمَ يَقْدُمُ قُدُومًا أَنْ مَقْدَمًا نَصَرَ يَنْصُرُ نَصْرًا أَنْ مَنْصَرَ So maf'al And then ma'ab Ma'ab is also a masdar 
originally ma'wab, but then from the root of sarf, then in izzi, becomes ma'ab. Correct? So it's a master meaning. Correct? Yes? Okay. Then, there's a few exceptions. If it is mithal, you saying if it is mithal, meaning the wow, uh, whose fa has been removed. So for example, it will be maf'al. So if you have a mithal, a normal word in mithal, maf'al. If it's a mithal verb, it'll come on the pattern of maf'il. So for example, maw'ida. Maw'ida. Okay, or maw'rid. Uh, yes, what did I do? To come to something. Okay, and then there are a few shahs. There are a few shahs, um, a few shahs, masad and mimi. Okay, there's more details regarding the formation. But we're not dealing with formation in this, but we deal with ma'ani. So, for example, we have here, mazir is a mustard mimi, a shahs. We have masir, masir, uh, etc. Now, the question is, what is a mustard mimi? So, in, th in, in summary, the mustard mimi is more emphatic. Because the, the simple rule is what? Ziyaratul mabna tadullu ala ziyaratul ma'na. The more words we have in a word, the more meaning it will give. The, str the stronger the meaning it depicts will be. So, Master Mimi has additional word. So, Nasra yansuru Nasran and Mansar. Mansar has the extra mean. So, that will be more emphatic. Similarly, you have uh, Maqdam. So, Qadima is just to come. And then Maqdam, the mean, will have it. He's mentioned here in this book what he thinks is a different, another difference. But other people have not really agreed with this, I'm not going to go through it. So, it is simply, we say his more emphasis. It is more emphasis regarding the Mustar al mimi But one point is, is that the normal Mustar, they are more, the usage is more universal. They can be used as Hal. So for example, we then, I mentioned this before, in Quran translation quite a few times. The principle is that the Mustar can be used where an adjective would be used. We say here, and the phrase normally uses is, is what? Wusifa bihi mubalagatan. Ya wusifa bil masdar mubalagatan. You use a masdar in place of a na, on an adjective for emphasis. Okay? So for example, um, you could say for example, uh, so it comes in the Quran, uh, Tawan aw karha. Tawan aw karha. Submissively or forcefully. Now, Tawan is a master. But if you look at Tafasir, they will all do Tafsir of this as Ta'i'in. So, Tawan aw karha, whether you, are, you submit and you're happy with it or you don't like it. So, this word is used in a certain context. Now, this is master, but the master is used in the meaning of a hal. So it's an, it's an adjective meaning. Wusifa bihi mubalagatan. You use a masdar as a hal. Yes? So for example, if you want to say Zaid came helping, you want to emphasize his help. You can say Ja'a Zaidun Nasra as opposed to Ja'a Zaidun Nasira. Yes? He's riding, let's say, a very, very harsh horse. A horse, a horse that doesn't normally submit to his rider, untrained horse. So he says Ja'a Zaidun Rakiban. It just shows he came riding. If you want to say he come riding, like, you know, proper exhibiting skills of, of, of uh, equestrian skills. You say Ja'a Zaidun Rukuba. You can use a masdar in place of the na of the adjective. Whether it's a hal or a khabar or a naat. We call it sifa. But the masdar mimi can't, it is not used like that. The masdar mimi is never used as a hal. It is not used as a maf'ul lahu. Normally it's not really, maf'ul mutla it can be used. But it's not used as a hal or a maf'ul li ajlihi, maf'ul lahu. So maf'ul mutla, maf masdar mimi is a masdar with a mim at the beginning. And it creates more emphasis, and uh, because of it shows has more letters, and its use is limited, as relatively speaking, to the normal master. The normal master has a more universal use, and this master it can't be used in all places. For example, it wouldn't be used as a hal for mubalagha or a naat for mubalagha or a mafuli ajlihi. Okay.